students how are you all in this video we are going to start a new chapter of class 9 that is lines and angles in 9th standard you will find all together 5 6 chapters of geometry so for that point of view this chapter has been very very important so let us start with some basic definitions and terms so first here comes line segment ray and line do these three seems to be similar but actually not so let us see the difference line segment is a fixed line segment starting from one end point and ending at one end point these are end point means fixed length line segment means a part of line and which is having initial point and terminating point its line segment then ray ray means at one side it is fixed it is starting from a point and ending point we don't know which is the last point of the line so this is ray means infinite in one direction and line means an infinite line from both side this side also infinite up to and this side also up to infinite so line segment fixed length from both means a part of line means fixed part of a line so line segment then ray infinite in one direction and line means infinite in both the directions angle angle is formed when two rays originate from one end point like this one ray and another ray both are originated from one point one end point means they are starting from the same point two rays and the measurement between these two is said to be angle now there are few mathematical points these rays are said to be arms and the point from where they are starting is called vertex on the basis of measurement angles are divided in different categories angle between 0 to 90 between 0 and 90 is acute angle 90 degree exact 90 degree is right angle then between 90 to 180 obtuse angle and straight angle or supplementary exactly 180 degree and another important category is reflex angle the angle between 180 degree and 360 degree is said to be reflex angle and next complete angle the angle of exact 360 degree is called complete angle now the next new term new concept adjacent angles two angles are said to be adjacent if they have a common vertex there are few conditions for adjacent angles they must have a common vertex a common arm and third thing their non common arms are on different side of the common arms let us understand this uh, let me make two angles to make this one angle how many arms are required you can see two arms are required to make an angle let me name them also one angle to uh, construct one angle two arms are required and let me construct one more angle so again two arms again two arms are required let us name it as p q r and these are rays so we will put an arrow here like this so two for two angles 1 2 3 4 four arms four sides are required to construct two angles now what thing is adjacent angle if two angles are adjacent two angles are said to be adjacent if they have a common vertex means both the angle must be on the same vertex and there should be a common arm so what the condition is actually if you just pick up this angle and put this arm ac by overlapping the arm pq if these two arms ac 
and PQ are just overlapped. This arm we just pick up from here and put it here. So the one arm will become common in both the angles. Let us see how. I have made this angle P, uh, R, P, Q again here and now I am just overlapping, just putting this angle by overlapping the side AC and P, Q. I am just overlapping. So I am drawing this side uh, C, A here. This is side C, A and this is side A, B. So the new diagram is like this. If I just name it here, this is C. This point is again, this point, point A and point P will overlap each other. So point P is here, On they are coinciding each other. This is point A and this is the angle C, A, B. Means A and P, they are just overlapping each other. P, Q and A, C, they are just overlapping each other. So for angles, angle B, A, C and another angle, another angle is Q, P, R. For these two angles, we can say the vertex P or vertex A, it is common. The arm A, C or arm P, Q, it's also coincide. So this, is, this arm is common and third condition, they are non common arms one non common this and one non common this on different side of the common arm one is on the left side you can say one is on the left side and one is on the right side of the common arm so we come to the conclusion that for this diagram and for these two angles we have common vertex we can say A or we can say P, it is the same point, overlapping, just overlapping over each other. Then common arm, AC or PQ, it's common arm, means this is the arm of for both the angles, angle B, A, C, angle R, P, Q. This arm, you can say common and non-common arms, means different arms like AB and PR, they are on the different side of the common arms. One, one side is on the left and another is on the right. This is, uh, you can understand like this, this is the common arm and non-common is one left side and another on right side. So non-common arms should be on different side. So these two angles, angles BAC, BAC and angle QPR. Now these two angles are said to be adjacent angles. If they satisfy these three conditions, they must have a common vertex, they must have a common arm and their non-common arms must be on different sides. Then these two angles are said to be adjacent angles. And students, one more thing, if you really want to make maths easy for you, so just not only watching the video, take your pen and notebook and note down the important things, basic terms, on your notebook and revise them time to time. Let us understand another situation. For suppose this diagram and they are talking about four angles BAC and BAD. Let me show BAC and BAD. They are talking about one this smaller angle and one this bigger angle. Okay, so let us check are they satisfying the conditions of adjacent angles let us check common vertex. So clearly they both have common vertex. Angle B, A, C, B, A, D. A is the common vertex. Okay. Then common arm. You can see from the naming also. B, A and B, A. They are having common arm also. Third thing, non-common arm. B, A, C. Non-common arm is A, C. And non-common arm B, A, D. A, C and A, D. These two are non-common arms. So you can see that one arm is above the line, another arm is also above the line. So both the non-common arms are on the same side. You can see it's above and this is also above. But what, is, what was the condition? The non-common arms on the different side 
of the common arm so but these are on the same side both are on the same side this one also and this one also they must be on the different side one should be left one should be right one should be above or one should be below but the in this case non common arms both are coming on the same side so non common arms we are getting here both are on the same side so these two angles are not adjacent angles so to check adjacent angles all the three conditions must be satisfied they must have a common vertex they must have a common arm and the non common arms should be on the different side opposite side in this case both are on the same side so this is not these are not adjacent angles now another very important term linear pair angles in this diagram you can observe that these two angles angle a b c and angle if we write angle a b c and angle b uh, d b c they have a common arm they have a common vertex and non common arms are on opposite side so this is the pair of adjacent angles now if we apply a condition here non common arms these are non common arms and if these non common arms are drawn like just opposite to each other means if they are extended like this if they are just making a straight line these non common arms are just making a straight line then these adjacent angles are said to be linear pair angles let us see how if these two ray ba and bd ba and bd are just opposite to each other means making a straight making a straight line then these two angles angle a b c and angle d b c a b c and d b c these two angles are said to forming a linear pair angle they are making a linear pair linear means on a line pair means two angles and we know total angle on a straight line this is a straight angle completely if we add these two angles angle abc and angle dbc if we add these two angles completely it is on a straight line and we know the straight angle angle on a straight line is always 180 degree so it's a very important result here the sum of linear pair angle angle abc angle dbc it's always 180 degree and it is used very much let us understand another very important topic vertically opposite angle these are formed when two lines are intersecting each other these two lines are cutting each other at point o then these angles just opposite like angle aoc and angle bod these angles are said to be vertically opposite this pair angle aoc and angle bod are said to be vertically opposite angle in the same way we can see one more pair is also forming here angle aod and angle bod angle aod and angle boc and by the using use of linear pair we just prove we can derive a very important relation between these two angles let us see how we can derive that let us name them as angle 1 angle 2 and uh, these are angle 3 and angle 4 for the easy way to write we are naming them angle 1 2 3 4 and now let us see you can see the straight line ab is a straight line you can see this is a straight line so just observe two angles above the straight line means we are saying that uh, this ab is a straight line if i am clear here so angle 2 and angle 4 are adjacent angles okay and ab is a straight line so what can we say about the sum of these two angle clearly we can write as uh, reason is as aob is a straight line so we can come on the result angle 2 plus angle 4 linear pair they are forming 
so we can take the sum as 180 degree again you can see the line cod cod is again a straight line cod and which two angles we can see angle 2 and angle 3 again these are forming linear pair angle angle 2 and angle 3 are forming linear pair okay so if i hide these two cod is a straight line angle 2 and 3 are forming linear pair so what can we say about the sum of angle 2 and 3 uh, we'll write the reason again as cod cod is a straight line so which two angles angle 2 plus angle 3 it's again 180 degree the same reason they are also forming a linear pair and if you subtract these two equation or you want to compare these two equation as the sum of these two angle 2 and 4 is 180 degree and sum of these two is also 180 degree so we can say angle 2 plus 4 it's 180 and angle 2 plus 3 it's also 180 degree this sum 180 this sum is also 180 degree so we can say these two sums are equal so angle 2 angle 2 you can see same here so we came on the conclusion angle 4 is equals to angle 3 we come on this conclusion these two angles are equal angle 4 and angle 3 you can see we have named them angle 4 and 3 vertically opposite similarly in the same way you can prove very easily angle 1 is equals to angle 2 so keep these results in your memory that vertically opposite angles are equal to each other so this was all about the basic terms and uh, to make maths easy keep all these terms in your memory in the next video with the exercise 6.1 questions till then stay tuned enjoy life enjoy maths as it's easy mm -hmm.